Join us as we go beyond the root in search of the many solutions to the deep-rooted issues within the Black community. Now, we may not find all the solutions, but what we do aim to do is have meaningful conversations so we can find some sort of resolution to equip the youth so they can deal with these issues in the future. So join me, Sam G. And myself, Joseph Augustine. As we go beyond beyond the the root. root. It is now seven o'clock and we are live with Beyond the Root. Yes, uh, you, are. Are, you are joining us, listeners, for our series finale. Yes, special yes. occasion. It is, it is. I brought the t-shirt back out again. Yeah, <laughs> I'm still waiting for mine. I'm supporting <laughs> someone else's logo here. I'm not feeling that, but we can talk about it after the show, Sam. I did yes. give you my size. We will, we will. Listeners, remember that moment. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Don't worry, she'll remind me about things I've done. She already did earlier on today. <laughs> oh, do you know what, everyone? I hope that you are well. I hope that you have had a blessed start to your week. And I am so excited that we are here today for our season series finale but it's not the end that you've heard from us because we will be back in October for Black History Month even though it should be every day Um, (laughs) but we will be back in October for a special there so look out for that on our social media platforms Um, but today we have our final guest in and before we bring him in I just want to say a big thank you to our previous guests uh, who started the show with us so we have Sace Holmes Lewis thank you so much for just being you because without him his team and Tivity you know they're doing brilliant work in their community and for our communities not just for the community of London it's for us all so definitely tap in to that live if you didn't already but if you did then just remember those gems that he left us and also Julian Julian yeah. Entrepreneur. Uh, it's his birthday today. So if you, uh, you're probably not watching, but if you watch this back, happy birthday. Bless happy him. birthday, Julian, man. <laughs> um, but today we have a community conversation special. And mm-hmm. it's just that, and listeners, we want you guys to be involved. So we are not bombarding our guests with too many questions because this is a conversation that we want to be able to have in our homes, more importantly, out on our streets, in our community in general. We want to be having this conversation. So let us actively listen and leave your questions on our live Facebook page if you are watching through there. And if you have joined us already, hello to you guys. Um, But yeah, leave your questions and get involved and we will ask them at the appropriate time. Joseph. Yeah, no, you know what, Sam? Um, Mm -hmm. It feels like, uh, it feels real good for me. I know I say this every week, but it's been a a hell of a journey for me. Mm -hmm. You know, from starting where we did a few months back, um, asking me if I were to work with you, me just already having that in mind and then coming up with the topics and all the recording to doing this live where, as you say, we started off with SACE, which we've had great feedback on. Thank you, listeners. Um, I've had some really positive feedback on that interview. That just It was really natural. Things really just flowed and it is the type of conversations that you want to have in your community. Mm. And then... As you say, we have Julian. Uh, that was really good. Uh, when he spoke, I really listened. He dropped a lot of jewels in terms of business because he's really doing it. There are some people that do this in the community, which I've seen through just doing this, where they get to a certain level and they actually get addicted to the position of being the bridge between doing the work in the community and asking them. and he's just passed that by giving it back to the to the youth looking to go to schools properly trying to get something in the curriculum mm-hmm. which is free thinking not your conventional how they want us to always think so it's been a hell of a journey even to now to have in our guest on who is well so to give back mm-hmm. and um a lot of jewels people should be listening to because when we're talking about community conversations 
this person really is investing in our community and how we should be thinking, acting, moving to support tomorrow's generation and to listen to the generation previously, spiritually, mentally, and in action. So it's it's really been a good journey, Sam, man. I've really been grateful for what you've done. And listeners, you know, thank you for this journey. This is not the end from us, but we're just having a short break, but we, we hope to end it with some serious jewels. We do, we do, we do. And without further ado, without further see, like, <laughs> without, without we skin out some white tea on TV again. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to get 50 pounds, unfortunately. That, that shows me off. Um, let's introduce in our guest. Yes. He is uh, Dean Akai Senior. And we are blessed to have him on the show. Welcome. Dean, how are you? Yes, listeners, give a virtual round of applause. I'm fantastic, and and I'm blessed to be here in good company with uh, Sais and my brother Julian. I love both of them, so Mm -hmm. they're doing powerful, powerful things. Um, And I know they're doing those powerful, powerful things because they're fathers. And I'm not going to say they have no desire to see their children repeat the journey of our people. They are not willing. And that's why, as pessimistic as I am, I'm aware of the shifts that those men and men and women like them are going to bring because we are legion. Yes. Yeah, I like that. Love that, love that, love that. Listeners, you see, you're in, you're in good company tonight. So remember, leave your questions um, on our live and then we can ask them. But first and foremost, Dean, let the listeners know a little bit more about yourself before we get into the realness. So my journey has been one of, of mistakes. I'm nowhere near a genius. I'm very flawed. I'm hard ears And something in my ancestors just tells me I can always do it which is usually wrong, which is where my unconventional wisdom comes from, because (laughs) I'll find the people who do it very well and get a peer education after it's cost me some time and money. (laughs) So that's the true version of it. And after doing that for 27 years, um, because I am a slow coach, it has given me some clarity as to not only what the system is and systems that work, but also the ilk of people that are really going to do the work that we require to gain a sovereign status as African Caribbean people. So we use the colloquialism black, but when I speak, you're just going to hear me very intentionally state African Caribbean because I deal with our ethnicity as opposed to race. Somebody else already owns that game because they created it. And we're IC3 with the Olympics coming up. We're already bronze and I'm not interested in that. But (laughs) as African Caribbeans, we have parity and we start from a place of parity at all times. Um, I will go into the black experiment at some point, but we came from a continent through whatever means and we're here but we never cease to be Africans. However, we translate that with African Caribbean or African anywhere else we came from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was one of uh, the starting questions that I wanted to um, actually ask you because Mm. I realize I've spoken to a lot of, not a lot of people, but a few people that have found some kind of issue with, with, with even calling themselves African. Um, and I find that's part of possibly an oppressive mind state. But how do we, how do we go against, how do we get people to really see themselves with that title of African? Yeah, well, that unlearn and relearn can only be realized if you're cognitive of the fact that you've been subjects in a 500 year European black experiment. So we don't make any contribution to the 500 year black experiment other than being the subjects. And it started by erasing our connection with our spirituality because they could never erase our spirituality. 
So then you just replace what are our natural inclinations with Hisus and Islam. No problem. Your faith is your faith, and I am no converter of man nor woman. However, we have an innate connection with our ancestors, and we can observe that voice, and I think you observe isn't you. Our intuition is as close as those who aren't aware will come to their ancestors contacting them. But the closer we come to them, the closer they inform us with a clarity, which is only African, because we're Africans. So as Africans, we have the opportunity to step out of the 500-year black experiment, firstly, by acknowledging who we are, jumping in that pool of exploration, understanding African history, because black history doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. It all came from the post-modernist society, and it all came post-slavery, because before that, it was African history, which has a richness, which has a culture, which has languages, which has wisdoms, customs, and those were all not lost, but hidden in 500 year black experiment. Yeah. So the more clarity we get about that, and we've been given all of the film examples, you watch Planet of the Apes, and there's the Forbidden Zone, where you have a dog that talks, but why would a doll talk if people never spoke? Mm -hmm. You have glasses, but why would you have glasses if people never... So all of these fundamentals that we refuse to acknowledge because it will cause cognitive dissonance, we... Let me go another way. Mm -hmm. My version and the tool that I use through ADPAC and now we use is slow exposure because slow exposure, drip feeding, leads to absolute adoption. There's no big masterclass. There's no sky's gonna turn lilac and the booming voice is gonna say, dark people will go in this direction because we've got to overcome 15, 20 years of indoctrination. And that indoctrination on top of what was already concealed from us is the very powerful magic that they use. And when I say magic, magic is merely the ability to shift consciousness from one state to another. So the easy part for us is that slow exposure to information because we know that is going to resonate. And the only time that it doesn't resonate is with those of a particular ilk whose ambition outweighs their social conscience because then what happens is the more programmed we are, the more they trust us with their program and the bigger rewards we receive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hear that. It's, it's simple. It really mm. is simple to do. Um, it's a method that I don't, in this generation, I don't understand how we are still here. Um, sometimes talking about the same things. Yeah. Um, also as well reacting exactly the same as way before you know let's, let's now take a look at the recent events of the football and this only coming on after you know George Floyd where everyone was talking about change everyone's reaction still maintained being the same um <laughs> you know but it's just a game of football in my eyes I think that into actually making movements within our community we'd be in a much better place on the chessboard I, I i make you right um but herein lies the problem in what we're tethered to culturally so being a football fan club over country because we're not English, so we don't get confused. <laughs> we, the, the longer we stay here is the longer that we separate from our origins and we become English-minded. Now, I have something that I call an inner coon thermometer. You know, the things you shouldn't do, you would say you wouldn't, and then you're walking down the stairs and... You see a white woman struggling with suitcases. Oh, I almost helped her and I stopped myself. 
<laughs> now, how would I feel if I got on the train and heard her on the phone and she started talking about darkies on the trip? I'd... She got you. She got your inner coon, which is at about 15%. Keep an eye on it because it could grow to 20. So we are constantly monitoring everything. And I'm joking, but I'm serious because that's an extreme case. Yeah. There are many things. It could be in the workplace and somebody just feels comfortable to lean on your head because they thought it was a rest. And I've seen this happen. And I'm sitting here like a fizzy can of coke that's been shaken in my chest and the guy's sitting there i can see he's uncomfortable but refused to do anything about it now these are extreme cases but then the more nuanced it gets the more acceptance of these things we get the more ingrained in society we get the more inclusive we feel it actually hurts our feelings the english people might not like us as much as we hoped which is irrelevant because the whole game is about pounds and pence. So just to smash all illusions, we live in a global economy. Don't feel guilty when you're going for your own, because we didn't create that landscape. Mm -hmm. However, we are obligated to uphold, promote, and preserve our culture so that we can take place as our ethnicity to uphold, promote, and preserve our socioeconomic interests. And because it is a race-based economic landscape, we're all competing for finite resources. Mm -hmm. So if I go to the pub to watch a boxing match with an African man against a strong European, like when I went to watch Anthony Joshua and Klitschko, oh, yeah. and I find myself one of maybe five African men vastly outnumbered. Um, and then some confused brothers come in screaming Klitschko. When Klitschko was hugging Anthony Joshua's knees, when I stood up and screamed, people went a little bit paler because I was fully confident in my interests. You don't have to be as exuberant as me. We just do it from inside. And when you walk with that 10 foot tall all the time, you're always walking with parity because you never feel forced to capitulate at any stage to anybody. And when pragmatism comes to mind, because we need to pay bills, improve your closing skills, your articulation and your argument so that you dominate that room in the same way we dominate on road, because there is zero difference between the road and a boardroom. Yeah. We look better in suits. <laughs> Dude, I like that. I really like that because that's something that um, me and Sam have been talking about for quite some time. You know, there are traits and ways in life that are just part of the system that Absolutely. we need to adopt. And that's not conforming. As you say, it's a system we didn't build. So us adopting these habits, habits to actually stand as an economy like you said is beneficial to us that's not us selling out that's not us doing anything else other than benefiting ourselves and you're right whenever we move and this is not a jab at anyone but it's just a fact whenever you see it because whatever pigeonhole they choose to give us we excel at it to a point where they need to remarket it almost every 10 years to suit them because we'll get out of control in their mind yeah. you know we, we just keep we never plateau, so it just keeps progressing, progressing, and they have to remark it. We do look good in suits. <laughs> we do look good in suits. We are dominant in boardrooms because at the end of the day, in their eyes, when the token talks, that means the token's there for a very good reason to be in this room doing what they're doing and being able to talk among us. So I just like the way you broke that down. But I can hear when you're talking, is very much about um, a greater sense of self and a community state of mind. And as you're saying, we take those small steps every day to mm -hmm. build something. It's like walking up a mountain, one step at a time, but you're getting to the top, no matter what pace you're going at. You're still breaking down them walls and accomplishing. Where did you get this from? Because I just want the listeners to know, 
Um, obviously, me and Sam, we've done our homework on yourself. And I personally believe I have my ideas of where you found this way of speaking and, uh, and addressing our situation. But if you could just let them know, in regards to your past, where did you find that you can actually project these things in a way that you believe people should be listening and do listening to So I moved out um, of my family house at 18 and I ran straight into a dichotomy of two worlds. Um, one of them was petty criminals in New Cross and what would possibly be construed as a gang in Peckham um, where we were just friends who would go to all dayers and move together. They weren't so much economic. My friends in New Cross were. But at the same time, I joined Panther UK just before I moved out of my family home and I was getting a political education. So if you imagine the same vessel is giving talks at SOAS, um, Hammersmith and West and the Brixton Wreck and then selling pirates and adult videos, weed, stolen goods in the other recreational times. <laughs> so that dichotomy of those two worlds forged me. Um, I never felt the need to hide my articulation. My friends in New Cross called me Malcolm from Morning because they said he preached. In fact, some of them called me Alak Watback. Um, <laughs> so when I go into an environment, and I did it when I was in working with youth offenders, like 90, 2005, 2006. So you couldn't just like that. Myself. So where do you think I'm from? And then when you get the person who would attack you, I knew how to turn their peers against them to then rescue them and call safe space. And since then, I let people know I'm a better friend than I am an enemy. Because I'm the one who's going to create the measurement of respect. But if it's not a safe space, I'm not going to be the one who's vulnerable. Yeah. So I look at, and what upsets me when I see guys come out now who may have a particular background is when they boast on that and play on that, having overcome it, where a lot of the young men who are possibly looking at them might only see those options around them. And then what is happening is that element is being endorsed again, like yeah. it was a right to passage to get here. So I'll tell you the truth. All I did was about four years because had I had better mentors earlier, none of that period would have taken place in my life. And it's not to say that I wouldn't have had these friends, but none of those events would have taken place. So it's not a rite of passage. It just happens to be part of my story that's forged my DNA. Okay. okay. And in yeah. that, you, that's where you found your purpose. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and even when I shelved it, having read Malcolm X at 17, it was like a compass point to always come back to. Um, and in any of it, um, as wrong as I may have been at any period in my life, I was never a bully. Um, I always wanted to help us. And I, I pretty much stayed on track with that. So there's a stage that you get to where you hide in business, which is where I found myself just before I started the stuff with the solution room and which evolved into Adpac. And that was, again, about the disgust with what the Americans were doing. What, let's be clear, what European Americans were doing to African Americans. Um, and then it started to mirror him because we had deaths in police custody as well. We had two prominent ones. And I made a decision that not only was I not gonna hide, but I was gonna use my networking and problem solving skills to actually bring people together to create systems. And it started off as a think tank, but then I just had such an inordinate amount of personnel around me of a very high caliber 
that I started to forget people's names, let people down, couldn't make um, commitments. And I realized it has to be an institution because it's above and beyond an individual's capacity. And then if your head gets licked off, what a waste. Yeah. Very true. I love the fact that you you joined the Panther UK. Is that something that is on the rise now? Do you feel amongst young people, or it is and it isn't? Um, I, I don't say my fear because it's my awareness. I'm aware that those who are attracted to advocacy are vastly outnumbered by those who are with the wind. So when it comes to the number of those who are active, criminally active, they are as small as the population who are concretely seeking advocacy. But what we get presented with is the myth. So just be aware that 90%, just like all cultures, representative of all people, are just blowing in the wind and not sure which way to go. And whichever way the wind is blowing hardest will get pulled in that direction, which is where you see the, let's say, the new decade trend of normalising criminality yeah. for us and our young people as um, an ethnicity is gaining traction because the wind is blowing in that direction. So part of the unlearn and relearn is that we have to start to reward those in the music industry for shifting youth consciousness to a place that's going to make them more effective citizens. So the projects are those that we have to come together behind, put money behind, put all of our resources behind to compete with the effective marketing for that which will ultimately get them a custody or killed. Yeah. I yeah, love, I love this. Um, I want to break very quickly on a um, not a fun fact, but I'm going to call it a fun fact because I think it's a fun fact. And uh, we were just talking there about uh, Black Panther, but uh, Stan Cope, mm -hmm. and I, I'm, I don't want to guess who you're going to say, but if someone from Black History Past was to knock your door and come round for dinner. Who would it be and why? Well, normally people would expect me to say um, Malcolm X, but it would be Marcus Garvey um, for this reason, because he accomplished as close as we got to it. Yes. And there are barriers. It's a different world, first and foremost. And the beauty of what he did, he managed to do this without the internet. Imagine we struggle and we say it's easier with the internet, which is true. But remember, when you have a deluge of information, a deluge of voices and influences, you just have a very different battle. But what I loved about his clarity was his ability to accomplish it. Now that's based on thinking and it's also based on spirit. He had particular systems as well. He had the systems of independence, obviously, from the Caribbean, being Jamaican, and going straight into vocational training immediately. Then the systems and tenets of Freemasonry, which he brought to the table, which taught him how to build networks, how to have a code with men, how to honor agreements, but also how to tap into spirituality, which wasn't articulated. So although he was a Catholic, he would speak to that because the people would understand it. But then his occult understanding from Freemasonry, and then there's an African, once he came to understand his ancestors, also would have informed his journey. Um, I would like to have a conversation about what he was doing when he passed, because he was writing the model for the bank. Now, this is where we are with colleagues now, but it's a much easier time. And it is much easier to...
but it's also much harder to deploy because as you said, Joseph, the minute that we become competitive, the goalposts shift. Yes. Um, and whenever you're going after a license, remember, it's predicated on permissions. Yes. So our problem solving skills are always about how to circumvent the gatekeepers. And even when people will talk about the nations of presidents and that they're feeble in what they allow, there's another version, the societies of kings and chiefs. So there's always a way to go, to market. There's always an alternative route. But I would love to spend a week reasoning with um, our esteemed Minister Garvey, and it would be a great privilege to share some of his intellectual capital. I like that. I, um, Marcus Garvey would be one for myself too, um, because of what he stood for, um, when he spoke about race first, you know, that's not, that's not a racist term. That is the fact that our community, you need to identify the issues within our community in order for us to really be seen, I believe at the table. Um, but would you say that this was the foundation then? what Marcus Garvey did, would you say that that was the foundation for ADPAC and developing structures? It, it, it isn't, it isn't. So the, the initial concept came to me from um, what Dr. Claude Anderson laid out with powernomics. Yeah. So that was the architecture. But for me, I don't want to talk about victories where we're talking about them. I want victories we can see and experience. Now, that's 21st century Garveyism. Yes. And the beauty of understanding Garveyism is he accomplished it. He accomplished an independent economic ecosystem. It didn't rely on the permissions of Europeans which was why it was absolutely necessary to infiltrate, use government state-backed fraud mm -hmm. to sell him a tub with a hole in it by utilizing agents of the state to steal the one million, which they would then go on to charge him with fraud from the shareholders. Now imagine, in the worst depression in American history, where Europeans are jumping off buildings who lost their share options, he and his team could raise a million in investment and accomplish it. Where we're finding it hard to raise 10 grand in GoFundMes today. Yeah. It yeah. is a different spirit, systems, intellectual capital that accomplished that with no internet. That's a different beast right there. That's a motivated man. Yeah. So listeners, ADPAC. ADPAC is where we are going to now because this is, this is for me something that I would really like to see myself and Rising Roots get involved with because as we've said throughout all the lives, this is a time now of change. And I definitely want to be a part of that change. I have my son, he's 13, and it's for him why I do what I do. And I've stepped into my purpose. If I want to say that, step into my power, we can say that. It's that added uh, motivation when listening to the likes of yourself and other like-minded people on the journey. I mean, let us know what does ADPAC stand for? APAC is the African Diaspora Public Affairs Committee. So when I said that APAC's initial impetus came from powernomics, the actual model in execution, I searched and we said, who are the most powerful people economically, socially moving without permissions of others? It's a rhetorical question. They've official observers of the African Union, much to my disappointment, I would go as far as to use the term disgust. In any case, the 
Israeli Jewish PAC and lobby APAC in the States involves commerce, successful business people, politics, media ownership, where the agenda of the dual interest, which is Israel, will absolutely be met out through superior economics, deployment of those economics, purchasing of those who are the gatekeepers, and then the ability through media to destroy them or create them. So ADPAC's model, with our dual interest being the diaspora region of the African Union, which is a virtual region created specifically for us. So the first thing I thought was, we have the opportunity to become of economic worth to the continent. Why do 54 men get on a plane to China, Britain as the so-called Commonwealth, or Russia for arms? Because the carrot is dangled with capital being there. So what if we could develop repertory banks, repertory courts of justice in sovereign jurisdictions on the continent, and development banks for philanthropic projects on the continent, where we're now making a pathway to create safe investment on the continent, making us worth money to our brothers and sisters back home, which then means our security is more important to you because a weak Africa represents weak Africans. So that's the dual interest, which like Israel protects Jews internationally. See, at the moment, we're all just nomads doing our thing. Yeah. We're all pikeys, wherever we are, wherever in this era, exploring individualism. No, I don't like to belong to any groups. I'm an individual. Well, that's great, right up until somebody calls you a darkie, and then you might want to join the herd for some of the advocacy. See, we want the benefits, but we don't necessarily want to get embroiled before that but ask us to go to the pub to watch an England game. I don't really watch football, but it's England. It's special. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've expressed my views on that. Personally, I don't really care if I get shot down for it, but we should just play for the team, get the money. And Arsenal. The Here you go. Play for your team. Well, yes, they're the original Black Four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I personally on that issue in football, I don't think until we are no longer you're black, you know, you're black, you're British until you miss, you know. So at the end of the day, play for your club, get your money, and then play for your team of heritage. Mm. You know, there's, there's for me because it's always been there, and it's just because I don't know if you agree on this, Dean, or even you, Sam, but. Because the narrative's changed since George Floyd incident, unfortunately, it's like now the narrative is where we've given it to, as you say, the UK or American Europe, the European Americans, the responsibility of defending racism. Because if you notice now, because of social media, the way things are going is, if there's a racist act that's public and it's against black or African, it's not us that's going mad as a majority anymore. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's the other side. And they're really just going for it because I feel like it's been marketed to them to be PC in the in thing. And really, I think you should just feel it in your soul and come to it organically. Instead of all of this jumping on the hype every two seconds of this is now the latest thing, because let's be real. Uh, it's no longer being hashtag, so society is no longer talking about it. Yeah, and that's how fickle it is, and that's how much. You're right. We do need leaders in marketing, so all of that stuff can be killed off, so we can be behind the scenes. Just like if there's any anti-Semitic, that's wiped off the internet straight away. But with us, it's a marketing tool because how much money is made out of hashtagging BLM or this matters that doesn't come back to the community. None of it comes back to us. It goes to YouTube or whoever is funding and playing these videos time and time and time and time again. Yeah. So we do need people in place that can audit that 
that that disrespect and get it out because that also keeps the level of disrespect and oppression and the mindset when you're constantly projected in that way. So yeah, you're right. We do need people monitoring it on that level where it is our pack. It's for us. You know? I, I agree with 99% of what you said. And like Malcolm, when he said to the European young lady, she couldn't do anything. My pragmatist evolved my position on that over the course of 46 years. And it's this, I ask myself a fundamental question. Are people a net win or a net loss? <clears throat> so you guys are emotional and you want to do something. What we're not doing is practicing the metaphysics of Tai Chi to harness the energy. So Labour Party is left, Conservative Party is right. Neither of them care about us. They're going to utilise the economics and it's a game show for each of them to get a money grab if they're in position with their whip. No problem. I appreciate that I'm non-partisan. I also happen to be the policy director for the We Matter Party so we can get seats in local authority and position ourselves to more fairly distribute resources in the community as those boroughs are made up in the makeup of ethnicity. In any case, those allies are as important contributors as we are when we're passionate and as uncut keys. Put an uncut key in the door, does nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So we become the key cutters, which is for, based on forming relationships. But then what those cut keys do for us is open doors that we can't open by ourselves. Our job by using the Tai Chi of the left and the right hand, ADPAC being the right hand, like Malcolm, the left hand being our politicians and our councillors, we matter, labour, whoever, to harness the energy, to put people in the direction that is gonna benefit us specifically. And what we're not doing is being calculated enough to harness the energy. So then you will have groups that infiltrate our community with agendas that are nothing to do with improving African Caribbean socioeconomic mobility, mm -hmm. like Black Lives Matter, who will turn up whenever the party is at its highest, yeah. but then they're gone. They got all the media attention because then they're easy to demonize, but they also cut with all of the resources that were donated with no accountability because there is no face to the organization yes. and no board. So when we understand the value of allies, you could go to a marketing company and get to utilize resources which are gifted. Hey, listen, it's got a gift bow on it. I'm definitely taking it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 99%. But I feel we're a hundred percent in alignment now. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do we get a seat at the table with ADPAC? I mean, do we have to be an organisation? I mean, we ourselves are from Bedford here. Um, so is this just London city light? -like, you know, no. can we all get involved? Absolutely. <laughs> you see, the, the, the beauty of ADPAC is it's about creating in chapter. -y. So if you think about a chapter like on the one hand for the contributors, like a CVS that enables them to become more robust. Mm -hmm. um, so having all their policies in place, um, the place for them to network, to gain resources together. And then you think on the other side for the beneficiaries, like a citizen's advice bureau that is signposting all of those organizations that are the contributors. Now, where does the money come from? Where's the bank robbery? So the public sector currently um, is responsible for 249 billion 
in contracts, which is 249 billion of the GDP. Central government is responsible for 49 billion in contracts. Now, it was announced about two weeks ago that central government and the public sector want to ring fence 10% of those contracts for so-called black and Asian organizations. Now, ADPAC is an umbrella organization that is gearing up to become a contractor. If you think about Halliburton and organizations of that nature, so that we will go and get the monster contracts, not to outsource, but to insource our delivery partners who are African Caribbean led organizations and professionals to deliver those contracts. So now what we're doing is we're underwriting all of our civic life, be that education, be that the um, security that is in various boroughs that takes so many forms, um, be that health. So think about wellness centers as opposed to clinics when people get sick. And if you think about people like Dr. Sally with Mary and Dina, yeah. so that our emphasis is on wellness, mental wellness, spiritual wellness, physical wellness, an education system, which is, and is also entrepreneurial in the Diamond Enterprise curriculum, which we turn into an academic trust so that then the state can't come in with the Department for Education and tell us anything. So okay. it's about systems, understanding sovereignty and how systems work, mm -hmm. creating a pipeline for the trustees, directors to become sovereigns in their own right, mm -hmm. thereby becoming ladies and lords, mm -hmm. protected outside of their system, for autonomous purposes. So remember, if you don't have a system which is a cohesive ecosystem, which is underwritten by economics and then delivers everything that we require and consume, you are still going to be dependent on those outside for your permission sets. It's only by doing all of this concurrently, which is why it's not about an individual, it's about having departments with directors and their expertise. So let's say educational director. Well, then immediately you, you bring in the aggregation organizations, so union of black teachers. So now you're not looking anywhere. You just got them who has everyone. Okay. I love that. Okay. I, I like that. Thinking about education. That was our first topic that we brought to the table yeah. and um, we had business as well. So with some of the partnerships that you are um, looking for, is that like the partnerships that you may have created already with like Mentivity and- Absolutely. Like, well, yeah. Absolutely. So both of those guys would be involved with the Schools to Industry Pipeline, which is an initiative that goes from nursery all the way through to industry and it's by paying it forward so in our own educational curriculum in our own alternative educational provisions yeah. so we circumvent the proofs by bringing them into culturally competent delivery so the most important aspect of this public health approach is that it's a culturally competent health approach so um, the delivery partners who are gonna be creating that care, wraparound care for African Caribbean young people are African Caribbean adults. So if you go through the various components of the schools to industry pipeline, rites of passage, which is early intervention. So they're introduced to those of virtuous character very early and they understand what effective citizen looks like by being able to touch it and access it. Mentors, so organizations like 100 Black Men and Mentivity, um, entrepreneurialism. So you have organizations like, um, God, how can I forget our brother? Julian's um, Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. 
and Access UK. I keep so much in my head sometimes. Is Sharon um, involved as well you, from the Black Child Agenda? So absolutely. So now when we're talking about advocacy, you have Taking Positive Steps, Claudine Jubry and Cheryl Phoenix. Mm -hmm. sure. We don't want to call on individuals to do this work. We want to get a hundred grand for each of those organizations for capacity building mm -hmm. so that then they can train the trainers to then effectively advocate nationally so that then they're doing the same thing with chapters for delivery which is paid for via those public sector contracts because they fit the criteria of safeguarding and protecting young people. Now, that's not social services. That's those organizations. And then when you have a family breakdown to investigate, what the Eurocentric version looks like is social services to isolate the child. What our version looks like is an organization like Father Figure who is going to go in to create the intermediary necessary to now the family that's broken down to mend that upset. So it's a very different version of what has been that gives us an ecosystem to protect, guide, and create a seamless pipeline all the way from nursery through to industry, which is where we start to get involved with more European organizations in creating the fast track leadership programs. So I just came off a phone call where one of the big six accountants is looking for 500 of our young people to position in their fast track program in accounting. Mm -hmm. So all of these things are there. And then it's just creating the relationships, closing the deals, so that when we just signpost our young people who are our brightest and best and seal them in those positions. It's about today creating the pathway, but tomorrow being able to guarantee the success of those who apply themselves. That's great news, Dean, man. Honestly, just listening to yourself, um, it's just good to know that the things that me and Sam and um, other people that I speak to someone's actually doing it and it seems like you're well into the wheels that are turning of doing it because mm -hmm. obviously you've got connections with um parliament labor and you're actually in as you say you're in there utilizing the tools that are right in front of you giving you this information for free and utilizing the system and making it work for us the thing that massively stood out for me there and um if you can, after I've said it, just let people know how they can get this information, because I think that's key. We don't have access to this high level of information. And that's small town UK, like ourselves in Bedford, Luton, Peterborough, pocketed areas that have these black communities. But when you're saying, because I know people that have gone through in and children go through care because of the mistakes they make. And from what I've seen, it is solely a thing where they just, they dump the information on you, they tell you what you need to do, and they actually just leave you to do it. But they don't tell you how to manage your emotions while you go yeah. through it. So when you're talking about actual community, because this is what we're having a community discussion, where the community comes together and you have specialists in the field that you can identify with in terms of color, background, basically mm -hmm. things like hair, it all matters. It matters. They can tell you how to manage your emotions, how to manage your feelings, what they look like, what they feel like, and how to reconnect with your family to make it work the second time round. Instead of just giving you, you need to go to these meetings, you can meet your child um, in this contact center at this time and do this. Instead of actually saying, look, we understand this is gonna be hard for you. Try these techniques to manage it. Is there anything that you, anything you wanna discuss with me in terms of moving forward and how you feel. Like, I feel there's a very big gap on empathy and feelings and emotions around these things. Because the main thing why people break up is, in families is they're not able to manage their fears and their reactions to that within the family. So they get angry. As a culture, we are not educated on managing simple things like relationship love, self-love, and mm -hmm. how to even interact with each other. Because 
as you said, when you were growing up, I'm sure there were times when you came across another black brother and you just, there was eye contact that was negative, that was indented in us Absolutely. unnecessarily. And we still don't know where that comes from. Because as you grow, the first thing you do when you see another black brother mm-hmm. is nod and acknowledge each other mm-hmm. because you are giving each other that gratification that, yo, it's a safe space. It's, we can we can say hello. So the fact that I'm hearing that is, is really good for me. So what I'll say about the schools to industry pipeline, you could just Google the schools to industry pipeline and you'll find it. Why do, coming from my background, you guys are in Bedford. Now, my younger cousins were from Luton. And, and I said, well, um, and the last brother has a situation outside of our custodial sentence where he's quite possibly the home office might think that he should be in a custodial sentence. If you say the name Okai in Luton is none. My uncle is known, um, my cousins, Paris, who passed, played for Oxford, Tyrone is under his younger brother, and for his infamy, um, my cousin Lewis, who is the last one standing, are known in Luton. And I know their potential when they were young, being highly, highly intelligent young people. I know where they are because of the systems that weren't in place to protect and guide them. So I remember, and I know Lewis wouldn't mind me saying, um, the last time I saw Lewis was at his brother's funeral in 2014, who passed when he was 27, younger brother. And I had a discussion with three of my cousins who had all come out of jail in a two week period. And I invited them down to my shop to set up a business where they could work together. And I remember I spoke to my uncle and my uncle told me, wait, I said, I'm not going to wait. And I bought every type of alcohol you can imagine. So when they came down, they would have whatever they wanted. I had a bottle of Hennessy, rum, blah, 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 blah. And I had a concrete plan to draw them together as a board to have a business. Give me all your NIs, we're gonna set this thing up. None of them turned up. None of them turned up. And now one is on the run from a 16 year sentence. Uh, Another one I understood was in a custody a few months later. So, I know what the options do to evolve and improve my articulation on a regular basis. My ability to sell, my ability to convince is because I look back and say, you know what? You should have spent the night in Luton. You should have just stayed. You should have stayed. Because the next time, I'm around, it may be one of their funerals. Yeah. So my experience, my experiences that lead me to this point are based on my practical experience of knowing people I love who never reached their full potential or anywhere near it, but doing amazing things in the fields they chose right up until they weren't doing amazing things in the fields they chose. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, that says it all. Mm. I think that really says it all. The fact that we are at this point, as mentioned before, where we do need to stand up now and really take note of what is going on around us and really, really want to get involved. Um, with regards to in regards to membership, uh, is there uh, a cost to uh, joining Adpac? Absolutely. So it's five pound a month for individuals, which we're going to make. I think we're just going to do the smaller one to take it as an introduction. Forty-five pound a year mm-hmm. for organisations. 
is £15 a month. And those would be the in-source delivery partners as an umbrella to represent the issues. And the departments go across economics, education, um, employment, health, housing, justice. Health is split into mental health and physical health. Okay. Um, and the mental health in our director, um, her book is here because it's gone out of my head. Yvonne Douglas <laughs> is, is um, based in African spirituality as well. Say that the tenets of our principles are based in African spirituality. Nothing that anybody has to adopt, but that spiritual fabric resonates through the policy that we form and the entire organization. And we are hoping that this is the component that really resonates with African diaspora people because we have seen there are many religious organizations and this is a spiritual system. You could have any religion. African spirituality doesn't dictate that anybody isn't um, a Christian, a Muslim or whatever. So it's more about understanding your relationship with ancestors, about empathy with fellow Africans, about principles that are based in us being able to rely on each other, the seven principles of Kwanzaa. So even when it comes down to dealing with upsets, they're in disciplinary, there will be a council made up of the... Um, God, my brain is a sieve today. Uh, too many meetings and too much writing. The strategic advisory committee that bring people around in a particular way where there are elders and there's a particular order so that people don't feel confident or comfortable enough to be disrespectful because they realize none of us actually have that relationship with each other. And this is what makes things untenable. One question, that I mean, was posed, yeah. one question, sorry, that was posed oh, yeah. on um, Facebook kind of says, how do we unite? But I feel like throughout this whole uh, conversation that we've been having, uh, definitely taking a look at adpac.net on the website uh, and going back over uh, everything that Dean has basically outlined with adpac will kind of be a step in terms of unification. So I feel like every, you know, the gems that have been dropped throughout will definitely answer that question of how do we unite. But I like as well the spirituality uh, aspect as well that you were talking about, mm -hmm. because I feel like that is definitely going to aid us in stepping into our power. I find myself now heading near 40, having realized that I'm fully here, I'm here, mm. uh, just flowing with life. And because of that, opportunities are now opening up themselves, even having you here on this show and reaching out to you, you know, on, on Instagram, having followed you for quite a while, actually, you know, um, but even just that, down to that, and having that um, within myself to say, do you know what, I want to make this change, so I'm going to do so. You know, I'm not fully established in what I'm doing. I'm still growing and learning each and every day. And I'm sure Joseph can match what I'm saying because Joseph is also transitioning into his power as well. But it's not anything that's hard um, to do. It's literally just reading the books that are out there and having those Sankofa moments because a lot of uh, the blueprint is already there. It's just a matter for us to really, you know, hone in mm -hmm. rather than talk and this is why this show has been put together because we do go beyond the root because we know there are levels to something knife crime and youth violence is not just there because they just want to go and do so there's always a root cause to that issue but there's root causes in education as we've so uncovered in previous shows mm -hmm. there's causes in our health system and this is what the beautiful thing that ADPAC is looking to do so please definitely check them out. Joseph I know you were just about to say something before I... No um, 
as Dean was saying about the links back to Africa, and as you said, I was just going to delve into that. You know, look, I'm 39, 40 next year. And I find that most peers around my age, if they're fortunate enough to look past the commercial and realise that it is bigger than that. And as you said, it's quite simple. Mm -hmm. Once you realise all roads lead back to Africa as a black person, it all becomes quite streamlined. You find people that think like you because, yeah. as you said, the energy starts calling out to you, the spirituality of it. And listeners, I hope you know that it's, it's really deep with Dean. I, the logo, I'm loving the logo. It means freedom that I've seen. It's um, the African symbol for freedom. Where you see, it's like two bowls bowing on top of each other. One's upside down, one's up top. And it was actually um, something that I've been getting into quite a bit recently since I've been doing this. And just, look, as you say, looking at our traditions, things that have been there for so many years, thousands of years. Mm -hmm. I was speaking about this with Sam earlier in regards to uh, Nipsey Hussle. He went back. And he realized his place of origin is only one of two countries in Africa that wasn't colonized. And he was grateful for that because he got to experience true African history and traditions that he never knew even exist. And he got a sense of himself and he got a sense of the fact that the whole village was bringing him back to being him and doing what comes natural to him in terms mm -hmm. of his blackness and him relating to Africa. So, you know, the listeners, man, it, we really have got someone special on the show in terms of how deep they are in terms of the black culture and what you're breaking down, Dean. I, I love it because I think of these things and it's hard to find people that think like that on how deep it actually is. It's simple, but it's very deep in terms of how far we have to go to build a system that is recognised firstly by ourselves because mm -hmm. we're loving ourselves first. So we know that there is a system for us to go to like ADPAT to get the support that we need. And I also want people to understand as well, yes, it comes with a price because in this black culture, we like things for free. It, it's, we'll come up to you and say, like we had someone that we interviewed and um, they said after the interview, their sister's restaurant, someone came, said this jerk chicken is like what I had back home since I've been in England. And then they turn around and say, well, could you sort out the price? But this is the best experience you've had in this country. It's worth the money. So invest in us because mm -hmm. the rewards are great because our intentions are always, when we're dealing with each other, it's always pure. It's always righteous. You know, it's always to help each other move forward. And it's not going to happen with handouts because this yeah. system's not built off of handouts. And this is the system we were given to play with, so we need to utilize it in the best way. So people, when you're listening, it's a small price to pay to be part of something that can not just help you, generation below you as well, because you never know when we'll need it. Never know at any given time. So We've already pinpointed as well that what the money goes into doing as well and helping uh, our systems to be created in the first yeah. place. It's not like it's going into people's pockets. But just before we go, because did say listeners, you know there was a lot to get through on this show and I don't I don't want to um, miss out on anything there's ad pack there is the solution room but I also noted the fact that you have developed a training program for young men aged 16 to 25 called manage is that still running Dean? It's, it's not currently running but again that same discussion I had earlier was about partnering to run that again. But the, the, the first thing I want to say, because I know we're wrapping up, is you spoke about you are discovering and landing. We should all forget the myth of landing because there is no landing and there are one million levels. And it's just an enjoyment of the journey because I'm no more landed than you. Um, there are just many steps and many levels. So there is no landing because the first thing that would do is give us the ego that we are there with the Neo. I'm telling you straight, there is no one. 
Um, and what I did want to say about the membership is it's free for all African student unions. So if you belong to an African student union, it's absolutely free. We want to enable you. We want to create a layered tier of African leadership who is so powerful, we will not be having these conversations in five years' time. And when young people are in university, they are at their most politically passionate. So rather than stretch overstretched economic resources, it's absolutely free. We desire to come to your universities to give the African, um, the African Caribbean Economic Reconstruction series of talks. Mm -hmm. So if you want to speak with your African student unions, we're currently having an exploration with an ex-slave trade enabler to sponsor that. So if we have the evidence of universities who desire to hear our talk, that would be fantastic. It would be a great enabler for them to give back some small part of reparations. <laughs> In any case, um, so that is totally free for those from the African student unions. And in saying that, as policy director for the We Matter Party, please also look at wematterparty.org. And it's free for anyone under 18 to join the We Matter Party. For anybody else, and this is a party that will run local constituents in your ward, it's £18 a year. £18 a year. So we are also seeking those who would like to run and have the confidence to run. We will fully assist in the training within the We Matter Party. So ADPAC's role is to create greater awareness mm -hmm. and contribute with policy. Okay. So when you look at how ADPAC works in the political sphere, it's adding policy. Our role is to turn that policy into practice mm -hmm. by getting the resources to put behind that policy. So the current conservative government you think is just about racism. What that racism is, is a, pro is a policy called benign neglect, where they see a problem, it will fix itself. No problem fixes itself. Problem policies require the application of resources. Mm -hmm. So if nobody thinks that we need an African Caribbean specific led party, obviously parties work for everybody, but African Caribbean led, then those people would say the Green Party had no impact on environmental policy for any of the incumbent governments. And if that is a fact, my name is Noddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, well, there you have it, listeners. Uh, Dean has just given you uh, some links, some beautiful gems as well that uh, we have got for our series finale. But it's unfortunate that it has to come to that time that we have to uh, end the show. Um, but before we do, Dean, have you got a final message for our listeners? Absolutely. So if you want to find out about um, ADPAC delivery partners, go to adpac.net slash blogs. So you can find out about the African spirituality, you can find out about the knowledge base, practitioners, the political party, all of the information is in APAC blogs. And you'll find out a little bit more about APAC as well. Oh, Dean, I, I don't want it to end actually, because I'm really, I'm really well. wanting to further this conversation with yourself um, at some point. But we have that relationship now because neither Joseph or you are going to be separated by one. <laughs> We've become delivery partners and we'll definitely talk about um, ADPAC chapters because we have people in Bedford as well. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, I definitely like to be a part of that because Rising Roots is all about putting unity back into community, but we cannot mm. do that just like we say, just one person. It's going to take a lot of us to do so and it can be done 
Um, so listen, spread the word, people, um, because this is all for you. We um, we're tired now of talking about mm. the issues. We now want to look and talk our action forward and celebrate and elevate all those that are contributing to black history. Let's not forget that every day someone does something, let's celebrate and elevate those people in our community. Uh, Joseph, any lasting words from yourself before uh, the audio listeners hear the music come on? Um, yeah, it's, if you're joining us now or previously, thank you. Um, it's it's been great, Sam. It's been amazing working with yourself on our thank first you. go. It's not the end. We will be back. But today has been a special show for myself. I'm sure it has been for you, Sam, and mm -hmm. listeners. Uh, a lot of knowledge has been put down and a lot of words of action in terms of you are capable of acting now. We... Yeah. I've put this platform together to speak about things that you can do in your community in order to act to better it and to better it for your child, your, your child, your children, your mm -hmm. nieces, nephews, your elders, just people that you can recognize, yeah. you know, they're yeah. the same as you, look like you, gone through similar things like you in your history and your culture is yours as well. So yeah. Once again, thank you. And thank you very much, Dean. You have actually really, really closed it well for me. Like mm -hmm. the concession of guests that we've had on and interviewed, mm -hmm. you've come along and you've really just spoke about solutions and how they act like giving a visual to my imagination mm -hmm. of how these things should be looking. And the fact that you're doing them, I could only applaud you. So thank, thank you, you guys. very much for the work you're doing, people like myself and our community. I appreciate you inviting me on and I've got one more inspiration. Yeah, yeah. If racism is a team sport, then circumventing racism needs to be a team sport. And if that doesn't spark us, then... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I 100% I agree with that. And let me just check to see whether or not anyone questions. Um, but thank you to all those that were there, present with us, watching. Um, I've had a brilliant time. And I know that during the time off, as well as celebrating my birthday, I just wanted to put that Happy there. birthday. <laughs> <laughs> um, we will be doing work. We will be doing mm. work yeah. because uh, I feel that's really important. I want to be able to come back for series two with the things that we have been able to establish. Mm -hmm. um, you yourself have got anything going on, then please use our forum page to advertise that. We have Julian posting in the page, letting us know what's going on. And like we said, yes, these things may be in London or in other cities, but collectively together, we are one people. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so let us not forget that. And the fact that we can tap in as well makes the energies even more beautiful. So let's just remember that on the leaving uh, for our series. And like I said, we will be back for series two, uh, October. Uh, but you can follow us, just follow us, uh, keep abreast. I don't really like to post A, B and C all the time because uh, I'm trying to do other stuff. But <laughs> I know that Joseph, you will be coming out with something just now, which I will let you introduce at a later date when you feel comfortable to do so um but yes thank you so much dean it has You're been welcome. an absolute pleasure thank you and um listeners love light and lots of blessings <laughs>